Long ago, vampires and humans hunted each other. Now, however, they live in peace, respecting certain rules. But everything changed when a bloodsucker overstepped the mark and started a war. Hey guys, this is Mr. Recap, and you are watching Night Teeth. Let's get into it. It's late night. Jay Perez comes to pick up his girlfriend, Maria, from a laundromat. While they're in the car, Jay notices that they're being chased by a Maserati. From Jay's reaction, it seemed like he knew that car, and was definitely not happy to see it. In a moment, they both stop, and Jay grabs a gun. The blonde guy in the Maserati is named Victor, a vampire. As soon as the light turns green, Jay hits the pedal and drives away. Jay got out of the car to find Victor, and told Maria to take the car away. Inside a basement, he found three bleeding bodies hanging upside down. In the process, Maria was about to start the car, but suddenly, someone smashed the window. Jay heard the noise, but did not find Maria in the car. During class, the main character, named Benny, was sleeping like a baby. Benny is a simple and kind guy who lives with his grandmother and studies economics at the college. In his spare time, he's a beatmaker, doing pretty well. His grandmother, Abuela, is a sweet granny who loves to cook, especially for Benny. Also, in Benny's room, we find out that he is a fan of skating and Naruto. While he was making a new beat, he heard his brother Jay, talking to someone on the phone. Jay works as a personal driver for very wealthy people, but he had other things to do today. So Benny would like to take his place and work for him, because he needed the money. Initially, Jay was skeptical, but in the end, he decided to give him a chance, and gave the keys to his brother. Benny's job was to transport people in a very luxurious black Cadillac Escalade. This car could be started from the outside with only a button. Also, since Benny was working in Jay's stead tonight, he had to tell everyone that he was Jay. Benny was very excited to drive such a car in such a fancy costume. You can see in his face that he was as happy as a child who just got the toy he wanted for Christmas. In the evening, Benny drove to a mansion to pick up his clients. He was quite nervous. He wanted to look very professional. Suddenly, a beautiful red-haired girl came out of the mansion. Benny confuses her with Zoe Moreau, but the girl's name is Blair. Blair was a close friend of Zoe's. Benny then made a fool of himself, because Blair noticed his zipper down. Not to mention, he didn't know he had to open the car door for her. He didn't know how to act. You can tell from a mile that this was his first experience as a personal driver. We finally meet Zoe Moreau, a peculiar personality. Quite aggressive, but with finesse. Benny's job was to take the girls to five different destinations until the sun came up. While they were in the car, the girls wanted to play a game with Benny. They asked him what he would do if he knew that tonight would be his last night. Blair and Zoe were expecting something spectacular, but Benny said he was a pretty chill guy and didn't have any particular fantasies. At this point, Zoe asked him who he was going to kill. Her, Blair, or his grandmother. Benny wanted to sound professional, but finally joked that he would kill Zoe. Throughout the ride, Benny was constantly looking at Blair. He really liked her. They arrived at their first destination, a type of party with masks. Before entering the mansion, the girls took out an amulet with a red stone. Apparently, you can only pass if you had one like that. Meanwhile, Jay was planning how to solve the vampire issue on the same night. Victor had started a war. The girls weren't back yet, so Benny got out of the car to get some air. On the ground, he found the same amulet they had. Soon after, the girls exited the mansion and headed to their next destination. They pulled into an underground parking lot, and, like the first time, Benny had to wait for them. In the process, Benny noticed that Zoe had left her phone in the car. He also noticed that she had received texts from Victor. Victor was asking for Jay. And at that point, it seemed strange to Benny, because for this night, he was Jay. Shortly thereafter, Benny tried to call Jay, who did not answer. This seemed strange to him, and he began to peek into Zoe's purse, and found a lot of money with bloodstains in the middle of the bag. As he touched and counted the money, he accidentally got blood on his face and the collar of his shirt. As if that wasn't enough, an officer entered the parking lot. Benny didn't wait too long, and got out of the car, and started running inside where the girls entered. It looked like a hotel. At the entrance, he met the concierge, who noticed that Benny was very agitated, sweaty, and with the bloodstain on the collar of his shirt, she was about to call security. But everything changed when she saw the amulet in Benny's hand. The concierge immediately began to apologize, and Benny tried to pretend that he was really the possessor of the amulet. The concierge walked Benny to the elevator and told him to drink responsibly. But she wasn't meaning the alcohol. When Benny entered the room, 
He was petrified when he saw Blair and Zoe sucking blood from the necks of two guys. Zoe, with blood on her mouth, lifted Benny up with two hands, began to scare him. At this point, Benny confessed that he wasn't actually Jay, but his brother. Zoe wanted to suck his blood, deeming him useless since he was not Jay. But Blair manages to persuade her, telling her that Benny would take them to Jay. Suddenly, one of the guys woke up. In fact, this party had been planned, and these two consciously chose to be food for the vampires. They were being paid to feed the vampires with their blood. But Zoe had gotten a little too loose and killed one of them. She didn't think twice, and told Blair to finish off the second guy. In the meantime, Benny began to run outside. As soon as he arrives outside, he is stopped by the officer he ran away from earlier. Benny desperately tells him what happened, but the officer doesn't seem surprised at all. In fact, he wanted to arrest him and take him away, but was interrupted by the two girls, who had finished dinner. The girls and the officer seemed to know each other. In fact, he knew they were vampires. After a short discussion, the officer led Benny free. He tried to text someone, but Zoe noticed him and broke his phone. Meanwhile, Victor, in his very luxurious mansion, was drinking fresh blood. In the basement of the house, he had people from whom blood was being extracted. They were tied up and asleep inside the glass boxes. After a taste of blood, Victor leaves in his Maserati to pay a visit to some special people. In the meantime, Benny was in the car with the two girls, and tried one more time to escape. He unbuckled his belt and got out of the car, but was surprised by Zoe, who had practically teleported in front of him. Back to Victor, he came to visit Grace and Eva, two very powerful vampires in the city. In fact, Victor worked for them. The girls, Grace and Eva, worked with Martin, another boss in LA. The girls know that Victor crossed the line of Boyle Heights and killed Maria, Jay's girlfriend. At this point, the girls must decide how to punish Victor, because he had broken a peace pact that lasted for years. Grace told Victor that he would be banned from the town for a long time, but the girls didn't expect Victor to say that he wasn't going anywhere. After that, he uncovered his plan to take over all of LA. Eva tried to call Martin right away, but they didn't know that Martin had already been killed by Victor. They were breathless when Victor pulled out Martin's ear like Mike Tyson. At this point, no one could save them, and they were both killed by Victor. In the meantime, Benny and the girls had stopped at a market. Zoe went out to buy something. In the car, Benny was very agitated, and Blair tried to calm him down. She revealed to him that vampires and humans live together in this town, following certain rules. Also, she told them that Zoe is Victor's girlfriend. Blair and Zoe manage the money from different businesses and blood clubs. Victor, having a thirst for power, had been planning this night for a long time. He wants to kill all the five leaders of the city to take absolute power of the city. Blair also tells them that Jay, Benny's brother, runs the Boyle Heights territory, and Victor wanted to use him to turn him against the city leaders. That's why Victor had killed Maria, to provoke Jay. But the plan had changed, as Benny showed up in Jay's place. So Benny was to take the girls to his brother. Between Benny and Blair, there is a spark. The two are getting closer. In the meantime, Jay had regrouped his gang to hunt vampires. They arrived at the mansion of an LA boss named Jayo. Jayo tells Jay that Blair and Zoe came to his party and made this killing. Plus, they sucked pretty much all of his blood. So he urgently needed a drink. After revealing that Blair and Zoe were heading to the Three Kings, a popular club in LA, he is finished off by gunshots. Blair, Zoe, and Benny head to the Three Kings club, and the girls want Benny to come with them so he doesn't run away. Before entering the club, Benny is recognized by his college friends. They stop Benny to use him so they can get in. Then they started making fun of him for being a driver. <laughs> Blair couldn't stand them, and grabbed Benny, and started kissing him. Meanwhile, Jay and his crew had already arrived at the club, and were looking for the two girls Jayo mentioned. Inside the club, Blair and Zoe meet Caleb, a vampire hunter. Caleb was not alone, and within seconds, the girls were surrounded by a group of men. When they were about to kill them, Benny threw the bottle of champagne over Caleb's head, and everyone got distracted. At that moment, the girls were able to liberate themselves, thanks to Benny's impulsive move. As they were about to leave the club, Jay saw Benny and recognized him. As he was about to follow him, he was stopped by one of the staff, and Jay, in a rage, took the knife and struck him in the heart. After that, the vampire fell to the ground and began to burn. As the girls and Benny were about to get into the car, Jay's group started hitting them with crossbows. They immediately got into the car, and Benny drove off, and Zoe, as if there were no danger, stuck her head out the window and started howling. 
Benny decides to help Blair and Zoe escape, and lets them hide at his house. Benny's grandmother was scared to death, and wanted explanations right away. Benny had never brought a girl home before. In the meantime, Jay and his friends are stopped by the officer working for Victor. He told Jay that Victor would like to talk to him at the Rosso Puro restaurant. At Benny's house. Zoe was talking to Victor on the phone, and he told her that there was only one boss left to kill. Throughout the night, Benny and Blair began to like each other more and more. Blair, with her stunning charm, and Benny with his simplicity gives Blair a melancholic feeling. You see, Blair used to be a human being, and lived a normal life, but she was transformed by Zoe. Sometimes she misses being human again. The time had come to leave for the next destination, and Blair didn't want Benny to come, so as to not put him in danger, but he decides to go with him anyway. Meanwhile, Jay has arrived at the restaurant, and meets Victor. Victor needed to make his last move, and wanted to waste Jay's time. While Victor was talking to him, Jay pierced Victor's head with a gunshot, and was about to stab him in the heart with the knife. But Victor stopped his hand and started to regenerate his head. After that, he revealed to him that he had killed Maria, and cooked her meat. Exactly, the meat she was eating. Benny and the girls arrive at Rocco's bar, a crazy guy. Rocco was confused. The three arrived unannounced, and he looked scared, but he was just freaked out. Zoe wanted to talk to him, so Benny and Blair had gone outside. After Rocco and Zoe had a drink, Zoe pulled out a knife. In the meantime, outside, it gets exciting, because Benny and Blair start to tell about their past. After that, they started kissing passionately. Inside the bar, however, Rocco realized that Zoe was there to kill him. And when she tried to hit him, Rocco managed to stop her. After that, Blair and Zoe started to fight against Rocco's friends. Meanwhile, Benny had climbed into the car, and helped the girls by hitting one of the vampire hunters with the car. The night was over. Blair and Zoe reached their targets, but Zoe had been injured and needed blood. Benny leaves the girls at the last place on their list, and discovers that the house belongs to Victor. Blair urges him to leave, but Benny refuses to abandon his brother, who was inside the house. Benny finds several human prisoners held by Victor as blood bags to feed on, including Jay, and Benny is captured by Victor while trying to free him. Victor and Zoe then threaten to kill him. Zoe realizes that she has feelings for Benny. Victor hands Zoe a knife, and she, in a rage, punches Blair in the stomach. In retaliation, Benny remotely activates his brother's car, breaking a window and exposing sunlight that kills Zoe. Victor then attacks Benny, using Jay as bait, and manages to bite Benny before Jay confronts him in the sunlight, killing him. Benny soon turns into a vampire, and the brothers part ways after Jay decides to begin training as a professional vampire hunter, and tells Benny that he expects him to fight by his side when the city descends into chaos. Later that night, Benny meets Blair for a night of blood drinking. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then check another videos by clicking on this pictures.